Hello there and welcome back to the Exotic Fruits YouTube channel. My name's Imogen and I'm part of the Exotic Fruits team and we are the number one online marketplace for exotic fruits in the UK. We're on a mission to bring fruits just like this from all over the world right to your doorstep. Today I'm going to be showing you the incredible story of the wonderful cacao fruit. I am absolutely obsessed with this fruit, just look at it. This is honestly one of the most wonderful fruits in the world because not only does it provide us with cocoa and chocolate, yum, but it's also a really delicious fruit when it's raw and fresh, which is something that I think most people don't know. In this video I'm going to be telling you how the cacao pod grows and how it's processed and, you know, extracted to create chocolate and things like that. I'm also going to take a look at its history and culture and then we're going to do a raw taste test. Boop, boop. Right, first and foremost, let's take a look at how and where the cacao pod grows because I think this is the most fascinating thing about cacao. So cacao trees thrive in tropical regions with warm temperatures and high humidity. This is why they're usually found growing in rainforests in South America. They tend to grow underneath the shade of taller trees such as banana trees or coconut palms and Cacao trees take about three to five years to start producing these pods. These pods grow from the trunk and the branches of the tree, and they'll be ready to harvest within about five or six months, which is pretty fast considering the size and like complexity of the fruit. Do you know what I mean? Once ripe, these pods are then hand harvested from the trees using machetes, which sounds like a lot of fun. Then the cacao pods are opened up and the beans and the pulp are removed. Now, the main reason that they grow cacao pods is obviously to produce cocoa butter, cocoa powder, you know, cacao derivatives. So this process is pretty much done every time that it's grown, I would imagine. So having like a full fruit like this, I'm guessing is pretty rare. So the way that they process the cacao after harvesting it from the tree is as follows. The cacao pods are opened and the beans and pulp are removed. The beans are then placed in shallow containers or in heaps and they're covered with banana leaves. They're left to ferment for several days and the banana leaves seem to help this fermentation process. Fermentation is a crucial step because it develops the flavour of the beans by breaking down sugars and other compounds. Once fermented, the beans are then spread out and left to dry in the sun or they may use artificial drying processes when necessary. This reduces moisture, obviously, which prevents mold growth and stops the beans from spoiling or losing quality. After this, the beans are then roasted to enhance their flavour, enhance their aroma and reduce bitterness. They're then cracked open to remove the outer shell, which leaves us with just cacao nibs. Funny word. These nibs are then ground up into a thick paste, which is called chocolate liqueur or cocoa mass. This paste is then processed further using hydro hydraulic press or something like that, I don't know. It's processed further to basically separate the solids from the liquids. In other words, it separates the cocoa powder from the cocoa butter. And both of these things are absolutely vital for making so many different cocoa-based products from chocolate to skincare. You know? Sustainable cocoa farming is such a crucial and important thing about our world. It's crucial for preserving rainforest ecosystems as the cocoa trees promote agroforestry and they preserve biodiversity in the rainforests. And cocoa farming is also essential for local communities in those areas. It provides stable incomes, it promotes fair labour practices for local communities. So cocoa farming is great you know? Okay, let's get into the history and culture of this fruit because this is also just fascinating. Let's take it back over 3,000 years to when cacao first originated in Mesoamerica. If you don't already know, Mesoamerica is a region extending from Mexico to Costa Rica and it's known for its rich cultural heritage and being home to various civilizations including the Aztecs. It's known for its complex societies, its advanced agriculture, its monumental architecture, incredible artwork, and more. Basically, Mesoamerica played a hugely important role in the development of early American civilizations. Anyway, back to cacao. It's said that Mayan and Aztec cultures thought of cacao as a divine gift. Let me tell you a little story. In ancient Mesoamerican mythology, there's a tale that tells of this god whose name I don't even want to attempt to pronounce. Quetzalcoatl? I don't know. Anyway, this god gifted the cacao tree to the people. According to this legend, this god brought the cacao tree down from heaven and gifted it to the people as a sacred offering. The tree was said to bear the fruit of knowledge and enlightenment, and the beans were loved for their divine properties. Due to stories just like this one, in this culture, cacao beans were used in religious ceremonies, and they were even used as currency. I'm guessing I would be pretty rich right now. Now, let's bring it forward a little bit 
In the 16th century, cacao was finally introduced to Europe, which eventually led to it spreading worldwide. Let me tell you another story. This story is called The Chocolate Miracle of 1659. So in 1659, a Spanish ship carrying cacao pods from the Americas encountered a violent storm just off the coast of France. The ship's cargo of cacao beans was absolutely soaked in seawater, rendering them unsuitable for consumption. However, a local chocolatier named David Chilo discovered that the beans had absorbed all of that seawater and had taken on a really unique flavour. He experimented with roasting and grinding the beans to create a new type of chocolate with a distinct sweet salty taste. I don't know about you, but I love when you know those chocolate bars that have like sea salt in them. <laughs> So good. This accidental discovery led to the creation of another thing that I don't want to try and pronounce. Chocolat à la Bayonnaise, which is a delicacy that was enjoyed by French aristocrats and eventually popularized throughout Europe. What a happy accident. Still today, cacao is such a hugely important fruit that is utilized all over the world in so many different ways. But I think we often forget that this is actually a fruit and you can actually eat it raw. And I personally absolutely love raw cacao. I think it tastes amazing. So let's get into preparing and tasting this bad boy. First thing you wanna do is get yourself a big sharp knife. I'm gonna use this kind of smaller cacao pod, but some of them can get pretty large as you can see. So you need a big knife. Now this is super, super simple. All you're gonna do is cut along the edge of the cacao. I'm not gonna cut all the way through. I only wanna cut into the skin or rind, whatever you would call this. And I'm just cutting along one side. Then you're just gonna grab hold of this. This can be a little bit difficult and just force it open. <laughs> I'm struggling here. Once you get your fingers in there, it becomes a lot easier. <sighs> there we go. And then inside here, you're gonna see this big cluster of beans covered in pulp. And you can literally just pull that out. It should come out in one big cluster. And as soon as you pull that out, you're gonna smell just the most wonderful smell. <sighs> so good. Right, finally, let's taste test this. So remember that in each one of these segments, there is a bean inside. So you don't wanna bite into it. You just wanna kind of suck the pulp off. But I personally really enjoy that because it makes it last way longer. It's like a sucky sweet or something. Okay, let's go. Mm. I haven't had cacao in so long. I forgot how good it was. And then you kind of have to spit the bean out at the end, which is a little bit gross. <laughs> Let me eat all the flesh off and then I can show you what a raw bean looks like. It's got this kind of thin layer on the outside of the bean, which I personally like to eat as well. Because when you eat, let me show you. When you eat this kind of extra layer off, then it reveals the perfect cacao bean underneath. The flavor of this is just so complex. Like there's so much going on. The first thing that hits me is just sweetness. It's really, really sweet, but it's also really, really fruity, floral, nutty. Like it's got everything. The texture is juicy and soft, but I feel like cause you're just sucking it and not really chewing it, it's kind of hard to pick up on a texture. It's just sort of juice and it feels soft in your mouth. People have asked me before if it tastes like chocolate. Honestly, no, <laughs> not at all, but it's so good. I love this if I'm like watching a movie or something because like I said, you just suck on it, which means it lasts for ages and you can just Pick at it slowly. It'll last you like an hour. It really is like an indulgent experience for me. I only do it every once in a blue moon because these babies aren't cheap. <laughs> Hi, Imogen here. I'd like to briefly interrupt this message to introduce the next section of this video, an exclusive team taste test. I thought now would be a great opportunity to get some other people to taste cacao and give their opinions. So enjoy. Hello. Have you ever tried cacao before? Never, no. Mm -hmm. Looks very strange, doesn't it? Ooh. Have you had it before or no? Mm -hmm. I have. I don't remember it being this sweet. Have you ever tried it before? I have not, no. Suck it, don't bite. Yeah. <laughs> Soft texture. Very unusual. I do like it. It's very, very different. Sweet. Very, very sweet. Yeah, really sweet. Can't really just... I recognise the taste, but can't think of it. Would you choose it again? Um, I think I would, yeah. I would choose it again. It's a bit like sour soppy. Really, really, really sweet. Tastes nothing like chocolate. No hints of chocolate. Mmm, very sweet. A little bit sour. It reminds me of like a sour sweet. You know, as kids, we get like the lemon sherbets. Mm. Not that lemony, but just a bit sour. Try and sour sauce. Cacao, yeah. Try and cacao. 
And there you have it, one of the most versatile, interesting and important fruits in the whole world, cacao. With its unique cultivation, its fascinating history and its incredible flavour, I just absolutely love this fruit. If you want to try cacao for yourself, you can order it by clicking the link in the description. Please like this video, leave a comment below to let me know what you think and also let me know which other fruits you'd like me to deep dive into. Don't forget to please subscribe to our channel because we post videos like this every single week. And share this video with a friend who might find it interesting. Every little helps, you know? Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Goodbye.